Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Friday afternoon, and I thought I'd do a Friday flashback. I haven't done one of these for a while. A flashback using one of my many photography magazines. And this one I just was looking at the other day, and I came across a camera that I hadn't really been familiar with. I don't, don't have one. I'd like to have one, but I don't have one. I'll tell you about it in a minute. But this magazine was... Um, Pro Photo, Australian Pro Photo came out in um, August 2001. And I used to regularly get this magazine along with lots of other um, photography magazines until all the internet and everything took over <laughs> and digital stuff came in. And anyway, I was looking in the back of this cam this um, magazine and I come across this camera that some of you are probably pretty familiar with, but I wasn't really. And I did a bit of a a read up on it and um, you can also go to a uh, Flickr website and you can see lots of examples of um, uh, photos taken with this camera. It's a film camera. It's pretty much a very expensive point and shoot film camera. I wonder if you can guess which one it is that I'm thinking of. It's got a quite a wide angle lens and uh, I won't keep you in suspense. It's called See if you can see that there. It's the Ricoh GR21. And uh, this was a review of this camera that was just coming out. And I'll just read from it. It says Ricoh's latest GR series subcompact is no snapshot camera. It boasts a 21 millimeter aspherical super wide lens, advanced control systems, and a price tag not too far off of $3,000, that's Australian dollars, uh, a little bit less in American dollars um, these days. And uh, it's just quite a, a phenomenal camera. What I was staggered was that um, the prices of these cameras are still fetching uh, on today's market. And uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. I'll just read a little bit of this on in here. Compact cameras don't often make it to the pages of Pro Photo although perhaps they should given so many working photographers carry one around for a range of reasons. Of course, most photographers like the idea of a pocket-sized camera, but the reality is that only a handful of models can be used for much more than snap shooting. Lens quality, rudimentary exposure control systems, which basically preclude the use of transparency film, and limited or no provisions for manual override means that using the typical 35 millimeter, or as I had then, the APS Compact is a less than satisfying experience. And it says, of course, there are some exceptions. Now, Rico has made what's arguably the ultimate 35 millimeter compact in the pocket-sized form of the GR21. It too has a magnesium alloy die-cast body shell, which is just 26.5 millimeters in depth. But this model's main selling point is its 20 21 millimeter ultra wide angle lens. It's the first 35 millimeter compact to be fitted with a lens wider than 24 millimeters. And the nine met element optics are designed to deliver pro grade performance. I'm not going to labor long on this. This is just a short video. So uh, the verdict that they wrote about on the, uh, the back of this uh, article well, perhaps I'll just, before I come to the verdict part, I'll just talk about some of the features. Exposure control is based on a dual zone metering via a two segment SPD with the choice, I don't know what that means, <laughs> with the choice of program and aperture priority auto modes. The metering range is EV 2.5 to 17 at ISO 100. And while the dual zone metering provides some degree of automatic um, backlight correction, the GR21 has a proper exposure compensation facility with a plus and a minus 2.0 EV adjustment in half stop increments. Additionally, auto exposure bracketing is available with an adjustment over three frames of plus and minus half a stop. Manual apertures from F3.5 to F22 are selected via a dial on the camera's top panel and half stop settings are provided, allowing for pretty precise control. The shutter speed range is two, um, two seconds, 
or maybe that's a half a second. I think it's probably two seconds to one 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 five hundredth of a second control. But a timer mode is available for longer exposures up to 59 seconds. And yes, a remote trigger. And yes, a remote trigger terminal is provided for the long exposures. Film skeets Speeds can be manually set over a range of ISO 25 to 3200 and in one third stop increments. I'm having some trouble with this camera set up here, so I'll just get to the verdict. There are lots of things to like about the Ricoh GR21, starting with this, its smallness and tidy styling. However, it's the 21 millimeter lens which is the big attraction, not just because of its expansive angle of view, but because the image quality is truly so superb. Distortion is well controlled and exceptional sharpness is maintained across the frame and right up to the corners. I'd suggest you have a good look at the uh, Ricoh um, group that is specialising in images from the GR21 on Flickr. For some, and the, the, what, what's there will bear out what I just read out there. So this is a brilliant camera. I'm just going to show you, I mean, the price they were asking for, that's what I was about to tell you before, wasn't I? The price they were asking for it was in Australian dollars, $2,899 for the two-year warranty that was in Australia only. Now, you might be surprised what they're still asking for this camera. If I can um, just come back to where I can share the meeting with you, share the screen with you. Where are we? Just hold that, just hold that. And this is on um, eBay. And the top price there, one at the top there, is um, $1,998.58 Australian. So what did I say the original price was? They were selling it for 2899 So that's only $1,000 cheaper. There's some other versions down the bottom there you can see two others, one for Australian dollars 17.22.14 and another one 18, sorry, eight, $1,722.14 $1, and $1,865.66. And so the price is still um, pretty good, isn't it? For a, a film camera that old, uh, these these only came out back, back then and then very soon after I read in one of these magazines that Ricoh decided they were stopping making their, their film cameras. So it only had a um, a lifespan of about five years from when it was um, produced, and uh, there was only a very limited. So I read somewhere else there was a limited number of um, cameras actually made. So that's probably why they're so pricey. But uh, some of the reports I've read is that uh, it's pretty hard to get them fixed these days if something goes wrong with them. But there you go. That's the Rico GR21, and uh, I think it looks like an interesting little camera, but I just wonder why you would spend so much on a point and shoot camera, even though it is a good one in film. But maybe the results that you will see on the Flickr website uh, might convince you. You go around hunting for one. And there are YouTube videos about people who've used these and they've got samples and they're talking about them, the pros and cons and whatever. So there you go. I hope you like that. Like if you like, subscribe if you wish, and I'll see you next time. And I might have to do a bit of editing because I was having a few problems with this. See you later.